Good morning. It's good to greet you again in the new year. Um, just in time for the siren to blast. <laughs> um, and uh, so we're still in the book of Acts, even in this new year. Maybe we'll get through it through 2022. And um, we're praying. I thought, you know, I probably should light my candle again just because the virus is everywhere and so many people are in such dire straits because of it. Um, anyway, so we continue to pray and we continue to seek God and just listen to what happened to Christians uh, centuries ago. As I said last time, we're in the 16th chapter of the book of Acts and the pronouns change to we. So uh, Luke is actually with Paul and Cyrus, Silas on this mission. And um, it's fascinating. This morning's section in uh, the 16th chapter, I'm reading the 13th to the 24th verses. Um, we hear about two women and their stories. Uh, so I'll read and then we'll talk. And yeah, we're back in the saddle again. Also, remember that I'm using the message, and uh, it's interesting in this section. So, just to set the scene, Paul and Silas and apparently Luke have gone to Macedonia, and they're in a Roman territory at this point. It's no longer Jewish territories that are um, ruled by Rome, but uh, it's a Roman colony. So on the Sabbath day, they left the city and went down along the river where they had heard that there was to be a prayer meeting. Again, they're in a Roman colony, so there's no synagogues. Okay, so we took our place with the women who had gathered there and talked with them. A woman, Lydia, was from Theria and a dealer in expensive textiles, known to be God-fearing woman, as she listened with intensity to what was being said, the master gave her a trusting heart and she believed. After she was baptized, along with everyone in her household, she said in a surge of hospitality, if you're confident that I'm with you and believe in the master truly, come home with me and be my guests. We hesitated, but she wouldn't take no for an answer. One day, on our way to the place of prayer, a slave girl ran into us. She was a psychic and, with her fortune telling, made a lot of money for the people who owned her. She started following Paul around, calling everyone's attention to us by yelling out, These men are working for the Most High God. They're laying out a road of salvation for you. She did this a number of days until Paul finally fed up with her turned and commanded the spirit that possessed her out in the name of Jesus Christ, get out of her. And it was gone just like that. When her owner saw that their lucrative little business was suddenly bankrupt, they went after Paul and Silas, roughed them up, dragged them into the market square. And then the police arrested them and pulled them into the court with the accusation these men are disturbing the peace, dangerous Jewish agitators, subverting our Roman law and order. By this time, the crowd had turned into a restless mob, out for blood. The judges went along with the mob, had Paul and Silas's clothes stripped off them, and ordered a public beating. After beating them black and blue, they threw them into jail, telling the jail keeper to put them under heavy guards so there would be no chance of escape. He did just that, threw them into the maximum security cell in the jail and clamped leg irons on them. So today we're gonna have a cliffhanger and we'll wonder what's happening next to our intrepid apostles. Um, <laughs> so uh, this, again, I, I'm just always amazed by the scripture and, and how really little I know about it. But you've got Paul and Silas and apparently Luke in this town, and there's no synagogue. There's no place for them to go and talk with Jewish folks that's established. Hey, Larry, how you doing? <laughs> so, um, so they go down by the riverside, and apparently this was a pretty common place. Oh, Annie, how are you? Okay, anyway, praying for all you guys. <laughs> um, so 
Paul and Silas go down by the riverside and Lydia's there. And Lydia is already a God-fearing person. Um, it, I would guess that she's Roman because she's living in a Roman colony. Also, she is an entrepreneur. She is a uh, seller of expensive fabrics. Um, traditional language says that she's a seller of purple cloth, which was the hardest to make. And so um, she hears Paul and Silas. She hears the words of good news for about Jesus Christ, and she believes. And Lydia actually becomes a very important person. Um, she starts a house church uh, in her town and, again, welcomes the, what we hear in this part of the text is she welcomes the apostles and she has them stay at her home. And so Lydia becomes uh, an important leader in the church. Again, when uh, men were setting up the church, they kind of ignored Lydia a great deal. But anyway, so that's who she is. And um, so as with this text and with the book of Acts, they just go on to the next thing. So the next thing that uh, Luke records is that they encounter a young woman, a slave woman, who has psychic abilities. Now... <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm not quite clear she would have needed to be psychic to say that Paul and Silas were out preaching the good news of Jesus Christ in a way of salvation. She would have just simply near to, needed to hear them once. But for whatever reason, um, the scripture records her as psychic and as following Paul and Silas around kind of as their promoter <laughs> saying, look, here's these guys, look at them. They're teaching uh, the way of salvation. Uh, good news, good news. And apparently after a couple of days, Paul has had about enough of that. And um, so, and, and maybe it's her ability to not control her mouth. I would emphasize with that. But um, so he tells the uh, spirit that is enabling her to speak these words of um, insight, I'll say, and uh, so he tells the spirit to get out of her. So again, I'm not really at all sure what that looks like, but the result is that she no longer has this ability to see inside a situation the way she has in the past. She no longer has that psychic ability. Um, and, you know, again, there's a lot of things that I would say in our generation that a psychic ability is not an evil demon, but... However it kind of shook out, she no longer felt compelled to use her ability for her masters. And maybe that was more to the point. I don't know. But um, her masters, who have now just seen this very valuable property of theirs, uh, DC, discontinued. They can't use it anymore. They get really mad at Paul and Silas and um, decide to accuse them of uh, subverting their Roman way and order. Going to get them thrown in jail. Now, you know, we've been with Paul for a while. This is not his first trip to jail. And, um, but it, I think it is in terms of the Roman colonies, which could be a little bit scarier. But, of course, first they have to get beaten in the public square, humiliated. Again, clothing stripped off of them. And, um, as they are humiliated and beaten and thrown into jail, uh, that's where I'm ending now, on a cliffhanger. But for me, it's important to remember that Paul went over to the Roman world, to Europe, Europe actually, because he had a dream, because he felt God calling him. There wasn't really any other reason to go. And he went to all these towns that are pretty impossible for me to pronounce. But he went there with Silas, his traveling companion, and apparently with Luke, to simply continue to tell people that God had sent Jesus Christ into our world and that that message of salvation was ours as a way to build and have relationship with God, a way for redemption, a way to have um, a God-filled life. So Paul never stopped. Uh, there were days that he was received well, such as with Lydia and her community. And um, again, that's where he started small churches. Lydia actually began a little home church. 
And um, they continued to be believers and continued to grow as a community of faith together. And it's those communities that Paul sent letters back to once he was arrested for the final time. Again, just a little hint, this uh, arrest is not going to be for a final time. But once he's arrested for a final time, he starts to write letters to these communities to encourage them because he can no longer visit them anymore. Remember, back in the beginning, or really the end of chapter 15, his intention is to go and visit the places where he has begun to plant God's seed of good news. And he wants to water and nurture it and have it grow. For me, there's a lot of things that spring to mind, maybe for you too. Um, one is that hearing the word of God and believing in Jesus Christ is the beginning of a journey. It's not an end point. It's not, okay, check that off on my list of things to do while I'm alive, and let's go on with my life. For Paul, for Jesus, for um, the beginnings of our faith, which again, Paul and Jesus are not the same, but for Jesus, it was about gathering disciples who could create community. And then even after his death was the promise that the Holy Spirit would come and guide us and make us into one body of his. But really, Paul was the one who wrote all about this and helped us to understand what Jesus was doing. And so for Paul, again, this man was beaten up and thrown out of every good town that there was. And so he never stopped. It, it didn't bother him. It didn't stop him. I'm sure it would bother him. And, uh, you know, I think about today, particularly today, uh, when we grind through another year of pandemic, when um, it really is safer to be in our own homes uh, and staying as distance as we can from other human beings to try to stop or at least slow the spread of this new variant. Um, I get tired. I, I get tired of the buzzing in my head. I get tired of uh, just the difficulties of navigating uh, this world in pandemic. And then I read about Paul and his incredible forthrightness and his passion to continue to preach God's good news. He never stopped, ever. And, I, and again, I'm sure Paul had a bad day. I'm sure Jesus had a bad day. I'm sure there were times in which they were just like, yeah, let's just give it up here. But what's recorded of them and what their lasting testament is that they continued to go forward. And sometimes they found a Lydia who was willing to believe and to get on board that journey with them and continue to let the church and the good news spread to others. And sometimes they landed in jail, the good and the bad. Um, I guess I would encourage you by saying, this is how our faith, this is how our understanding of who Jesus Christ is. This is how our belief took root by one human being telling another human being and both of them being willing to respond and be open to the Spirit of God moving in their lives. That's it. There, there wasn't a magic book written. There wasn't a magic tablet given down from the high mountains. There were human beings trying to do their best to be faithful to God. And sometimes their best landed them in jail because of the current culture. So, if you're out there trying to be faithful and the days get long, know that that was always true. That this human existence has never been a simple or an easy one, particularly as easy as it's been for me, you know, again, white American in the U.S., born to parents who were hardworking and provided all things for me, as in addition to an education. Um, opportunity for an education. Usually life has been harder, and I think we've been experiencing that recently. But God's Word has never failed. God's Word has never failed, and Paul continues to live that for us, that no matter what circumstance, 
or they're sitting by the river with a woman who's going, yeah, I get it. Let's go do this a lot. <laughs> or, oops, public square, stripped of all your clothing and beaten black and blue. Paul is believing. He later writes in one of his letters, I've learned to be content in whatever circumstances I find myself. This was a man who knew what he was talking about. So next week, <laughs> we'll see what happens to Paul and Silas in jail. And we'll continue to try to, I'll continue to try to be God's person in this place. Praying for all of you. Thank you for being with me and watching and knowing that God's love is sufficient for all our needs. Even in January when it's cold and when the pandemic is too rampant out there. But God's love is sufficient for all our needs. Bye, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Talk to you next week.